Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSight Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Computer Sciences, we will be talking about Information Security, Threats and Attacks. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. Rajendra Kumar. Dr. Kumar is Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Sciences, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome Sir. Thank you. Uh, hello friends, uh, today we will discuss about the threats and attacks uh, of information security. First I would like to acknowledge various online and offline resources are used to make these PPT slides. That includes online websites, some books also. Uh, we will learn some points after completion of today lecture that is first we would like to demonstrate the organizations have a business need for information security, explain why a successful information security program is the responsibility of both an organization, journal management and IT management, identify the threats posed to inform security and more common attacks associated with those threats and differentiate uh, threats to the information within systems from attacks against the information within systems. We will also describe some issues facing software developers as well as the most common error made by developers and explain how software development programs can create software that is more secure and reliable. In introduction, the primary mission of the information security is to ensure systems and contents stay the same. It means whatever we are uh, policies, procedure or controls are applying to our data or the system, the system state should not be changed or should not be affected uh, because of the security measures. If no threats exist, exist Resources should, uh, could be focused on improving systems resulting in vast improvements in each of use and usefulness. Attack on, on information systems are a daily occurrences. That is why we need to discuss threats and the attacks and also to understand how these can be handled. Business needs first. Information security performs four important functions for an organization, protect the ability to function, enables safe operation of applications implemented on its IT systems, protects data the organization collects and uses, safeguard technologies assets in use. So, these are the four main functions that information security protect or perform for a particular organization. First is protecting the functionality of an organization. Different organization can have the different types of the functionality. So, according to the need or the functionality of the organization, we should uh, deploy information security measures and the policies because the one major cannot be fit to all the organization. Both general management and the uh, IR management are responsible for implementing information security to protect the ability of organization to function. Information security is a management issue in addition to a technical issue, it is a pupil issue in addition to the technical issue. It means information security cannot only be treated like just a technical issue, we should involve the top management as well as the middle management and the lower management to properly implement information security in a particular organization. To assist management in addressing the needs for information security, communities of interest must communicate in terms of business impact and the cost of business interruption and avoid arguments expressed only in technical terms. We can have some policies which are very 
uh, important from the technical terms, but uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, they are not the feasible according to the organization need. So, we need to manage, we need to uh, keep the balance between the information security measures and the organizational functionality. Enabling the safe operation of the application, this is the second function in which information security play an important role for a particular organization that the safe operation of the applications. An organization can run many, many applications and they are there only to provide the functionality according to a particular organization, but information security is used to provide all the applications functionality in a secure way. If a particular application is processing the data, but it is not uh, processing securely, so that will not be acceptab acceptable in an organization. Today's organization are under immense pressure to create and operate integrated, efficient and capable applications because the rule of the 24 uh, into 7 online uh, availability of the organization, they need to adapt the information technology systems and to create and operate the integrated, efficient and capable applications. The modern organization needs to create an environment that safeguards applications using the organization's IT systems, particularly the environment of the organization infrastructure. Then once the infrastructure is in place, management must understand it has not abducted, abdicated to the IT department its responsibility to make choices and enforce decision, but must continue oversees the infrastructure. Infrastructure is a very important uh, uh, thing in a particular organization. If it is not having the proper infrastructure, so the IT will not be implementable in its perfect way. So, the once the organization needs to place the infrastructure, the infrastructure can have uh, various hardware resources regarding IT management system. So, once the infrastructure in place, then IT system can properly implement it and the safe operation of the applications can be performed. Third is protecting data that organizations collect and use. This is very important because all the information technology is surrounding with, uh, the data, the storage of the data, the operation that can be performed on the data, the processing of the data and the use of the data. So, information security should play a role that the storage of data, processing of data and when the data is used by its user. Many organizations realize that one of their most valuable assets in their data because without data and organization loses its record of transaction and or its ability to deliver value of its customer. We can think this with the example of just suppose a banking system which is having the customer's account data. If the data regarding the accounts of the customers get lost by the bank, so, customer will lose their trust on that particular bank or the organization and the operation or the business of that particular organization can also be shut down. Protecting data in motion, it means when we are transferring the data, data at rest, it means it is at the storage are both critical aspects of the information security. An effective information security program is essential to the protection of the integrity and the value of the organization data. The confidentiality, integrity of the data, it means whenever we are transferring the data from one device to another device or from one location to another location, so the integrity of the data should be protected. It means the data as it is sent by the sender should be reached at the receiver without any modification. Safeguarding technology assets in organization. In an organization, we can have the data, we can have the employees, we can have the technology assets. These technology assets can be various hardware devices, these can be simply UPS system, these can be simply electrical devices uh, that can be directly or indirectly related to a particular organization. So, the organization should have a sheet 
that whatever the assets are belonging to an organization and the quality as well as the priority to the assets which are more important and which are less important. Based on that functionality uh, uh, from the organization, we can choose that which asset should be safeguard or safeguarded and which asset should not be safeguarded. To perform effectively organization must add secure infrastructure services based on the size and scope of the enterprises. A network uh, organization grows and more capabilities are needed, additional security services may have to be provided locally. Likewise, as the organization network grows to accommodate changes, more robust technology solutions may be needed to replace security programs the organization has outgrown. Because the size of the organization or the based on the business of the organization can be grow from time to time on the yearly basis or the quarterly basis, maybe the particular organization at a time have a single office, after one year, two year it can have two offices based on the business of the organization. So, our information security program should not stop only by protecting the assets of the organization at one location, it should be spread as the organization network is going. Now, threats. Threats and the attacks are very important to make information security policies, procedures as well as the safeguarding techniques. To make sound decisions about the information security, create policies, enforce them, management must be informed of the various kinds of the threats facing the organization, its applications, data and information system. As we talk about the organization assets, so an organization can have an applications, can have the data, can have the different different information systems. Based on that one, a threat is an object, person or other entity that represents a constant danger to an asset. An organization will have the assets and these assets can face the danger these dangers can be from an object, can be from a person or other entity that can be directly related to the asset of the organization or that can be indirectly related to the organization. So, all such uh, types of the threat that can be present, that can be emerged in the future for an organization, an organization should know all these assets. To better understand the numerous threats facing the organization, a categorization scheme that is also the part of risk management has been developed allowing us to group threats by their respective activities. It means more than one threat can be linked to a single attack or to a single asset based on various characteristics of a particular threat, we can develop the scheme that can be used to categorize the threats. Also, the severity of the threats can also be uh, understand based on the uh, uh, our categorization scheme of a particular threat. Overall, security is improving according to the surveys. Uh, some statistics is given by the CSI and the FBI agencies uh, from the US. 64 percent of the organization had malware infections. We can have such type of the uh, trust from the organization that uh, uh, at least in a month, we can see that we our systems who are working on the computer system can be infected by various malware functions. As well as nowadays we are also having the mobiles and the other devices that can be our music system whatever and if it is connected to the internet, so it is all time at the risk. 14 percent indicated system penetration by an outsider. It means there can be the threat from the insider or there can be the threat from the outsider of an organization. So, the statistics says that 14 percent indicated system penetration by an outsider. This uh, slide is giving us the most uh, uh, example, most discussed and the important one threats uh, for the information security. 
given around 14 and they are categorized based on a particular attack or the threat to the organization. The first is compromises to an intellectual property, we will discuss just later, software attacks, deviations in quality of service, espionage or trespass, forces of nature, human error or failure, information extortion, missing inadequate or incomplete information, missing inadequate or incomplete controls, sabotage or vandalism, theft technical hardware failures or errors, technical software failures or errors, technological obsolescence. So, first is this in this figure we can see that uh, the statistics is given of the internet uses uh, in uh, whole globe and uh, different uh, just like North America, Africa, Latin America, Europe, Asia, Middle East world total. So, the usage growth in the last decade of the internet is around 400 percent and if our systems are connected to the internet, so they are not 100 percent secure. The main threat to the devices that they are connected to the outside world which we cannot stop ourselves as most of the work done on the computer system with the help of the internet either it can be our daily uses that we are booking a reservation seat in a train or in a plane, either we are booking a ticket for the movie, either just we want to go from one place to another place. So, we just use the Google Maps or the information we are regard, uh, getting from the uh, email system or the information we are getting from other application that can be WhatsApp, any other messenger application. So, we can see and all of us know that all these systems needs to be connected to the internet and if the in our systems are connected to the internet, so they are not secure. First thread says compromises to intellectual property. Many organization create or support the development of intellectual property as part of their business operations. The intellectual property is defined as the ownership of ideas and control over the tangible or virtual representation of those ideas. Intellectual property for an organization include trade secrets, copyrights, trademarks and the patents. Once intellectual property has been defined and properly identified, breaches to IP internet protocol or I, uh, inter, uh, address IP address uh, intellectual property constitute a threat to the security of this information system. Why we can say that the compromises to the intellectual property is a threat? Because most of the organization nowadays keeping their data online and they store their data, process their data, transfer their data with the help of the information technology devices that can be hardware or the software. And because the intellectual property one of the main uh, function of a particular organization, especially the law uh, companies, law companies and some uh, your international organization, if a particular organization developed a particular product, so they need to have their copyrights on that uh, product. If that product or if that copyrights uh, 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 given to other person, so there will be the copyrights violation. So, all these trade secrets, copyrights, trademarks and the patent should be protected and uh, if the organization is connected online, so there can be the compromise of the intellectual property and that will constitute the threat to the organization. Most common intellectual property breaches involve the unlawful use of duplication of software based intellectual property known as software piracy. We most of us we friends know that what is the software piracy that uh, many of in uh, especially the student level use the pirated software. Pirated software is that you are not having the license 
actually whatever the software are there, we need to purchase from the creator of that software and need to pay a fee for the license that makes you use of that software. But because software piracy is there, so and the software can also be the copyrighted uh, product of a particular organization. So, uh, compromise of the IP breaches can be an unlawful use of duplication or software based intellectual property. In addition to the laws surrounding software piracy, two watchdog organizations investigate allegations of software abuse, software and information industry association formerly the software publisher association and the business software alliances. In different different countries, different different organization can be there. In India, we are having Ministry of Corporate Affairs. We are also having Information Technology Act, which can have their sub organization, which can deal uh, for the software piracy. Enforcement of copyrights violations, piracy and the like has been attempted uh, through a number of technical security mechanisms including digital watermarks and embedded codes. These are some uh, specialized technique of the information security. These include digital watermarks, embedded codes which can be used to enforce the copyright violations, piracy and the like attempted to through a number of technical security mechanisms. So, these are uh, especially techniques. Second is deliberate software attacks. Friends, we most of uh, know about the, if we are in the computer science, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, logic bombs, backdoor or trapdoor, polymorphic threats, viruses and worm hoaxes. These are called the categorized as a software attacks and also called the malware, which is representing malicious software designed to damage, destroy or deny services to target system. So, what are the uh, deliberate software attacks occur when an individual or group designs software to attack an unsuspecting system. Most of the software is referred to as malicious code or malicious software, simply the malware. These malware components or the programs are designed to damage, destroy or deny service to the target systems. As we see that malware itself a program, so they needs to be written by the programmer and the programmer <coughs> who is only writing the malware also called the hacker. Some of the more common instances of malicious code are viruses and worms, Trojan horses, logic bombs, backdoors and denial of services attacks. Viruses. Computer viruses are segments of code that perform malicious action. It means the unintended actions or without the knowledge of the user. This code behaves very much like a virus pathogen attacking animals and the plants using the cells on replication machinery to propagate and attack. The code attaches itself to the existing program and takes control of that program's access to the targeted computer. It means the code written uh, to represent as a virus unintended actions or malicious actions attaches itself to the existing program and take the control of that program's access. It can uh, reside in the memory, can be attached itself to a simply a music you are listening that can be attached uh, with the help of some binary files. The virus control target program then carries out the viruses plan by replicating itself into additional targeted system. It means it can tar it can also target it target not only the home system in which the virus executing if that system is connected to the network or any other device, that particular virus can also attack to the newly attached device. The macro virus is embedded in the automatically executing macro code common in office productivity software like word processor, spreadsheets and database applications. 
many times we see that when we are trying to opening our a particular word file. So, that file gets opened or not opened in both of the cases the virus that is attached or that is uh, programmed to work either opening or closing a word file gets automatically activated in the system and also attacked to other resources in the system. These resources can be applications, can be your mouse, can be your keyboard, whatever it is or the database applications. Then your boot virus, one of the variety of the virus infects the key operating systems files located in the computer's boot sector. As I told you that a particular virus can reside itself in the memory. And as we know, the main memory is one of the more, most important part of a computer system that all the codes which needs to the execution on the processor needs to be in the main memory and processor directly access the main memory of a computer. So, we can see that if the viruses attaches itself or infects the main memory of a particular computer system. So, it can easily attached or attacked uh, by itself to all the system or the operating system of a computer. These type of the viruses are also called boot sector viruses. Worms, malicious programs that replicate themselves constantly without requiring another program or to provide a safe environment for application. Uh, worms can continue, continue replicating themselves until they completely fill available resources such as memory, hard drive space and network bandwidth. Further, they can also create denial of service attacks. So, worms are the program just a little bit different from the viruses that they do not need to attach themselves for with other programs. and they simply can themselves have the capabilities to uh, replicate themselves and attack the system. One Trojan horses that software programs that hide their true nature and reveal their designed behavior only when activated. Trojan horses are frequently distributed as helpful, interesting or necessary pieces of software such as readme.exe files often included with shareware or freeware packages. So, this is about the Trojan horses, uh, programs or necessary pieces of software such as readme.exe uh, files often included with shareware or freeware packages. Uh, in this slide, we can see the example of the Trojan horse that Trojan horse arise via email or software such as free games. Trojan horse is activated when the software is uh, software or attached in executed. Trojan horse releases its payload, monitors computer activity, installs backdoor or transmit information. So, friend, this is about the Trojan horse. Now, in the next section, we will discuss some more attacks uh, regarding information security.
Welcome back friends, we were discussing about the various threats uh, uh, regarding the information security the particular organization can face. Uh, just we discussed about the Trojan horses, now the next one is backdoor or trapdoor uh, virus or the worm can have a payload that installs a backdoor or trap door component in a system. This allows the attacker to access the system at will with specialized privileges. We can see that these are the type of the viruses or the worms that simply uh, get stored in a particular system and whenever an attacker wants to access the system they get uh, activated and give the special privileges to the attacker. Polymorphism, a threat that changes its apparent shape over time representing a new threat not detectable by techniques that are looking for pre-configured signature. These threats actually evolve changing their size and appearance to elude detection of antivirus software programs making detection more a challenge. So, as the concept is uh, polymorphism, it is also implemented by the hackers who are capable to write the programs which can act as the viruses that they can themselves change with the time. Just as we see that our antivirus softwares are not capable to catch all the viruses or the worms which are or which can affect our computer system. The main reason is that the viruses or the worms which are already attacked or can attack to our computer system are capable to change themselves over time. It means they can simply bypass our security mechanism that can be antivirus system or that can be firewalls used to protect a particular network. Virus and worm hoaxes, as frustrating as viruses and worms are, perhaps more time and money is spent on resolving virus hoaxes. Well meaning people spread the viruses and worms when they send emails warning of fixtures or virus hidden threats. We can see many times we can uh, get the emails from unknown or also the known sources that they are demanding money or they are just uh, blackmailing a particular or, uh, organization or the user. So, these are the pre-planned viruses and the worm hoaxes that can be directly sent to the user email box. Another threat can be divisions in quality of service. We can have the different types of the uh, viruses, different type of the worms or the different types of the attacking system in information technology. Uh, so, the threat from them can be deviations in quality of service. It means many times we see that the service provided by a particular organization we are not receiving. One of the example is that just uh, we are accessing the internet and the organizations are promised to provide the minimum bandwidth to the user. But there is just we will discuss that there is the attack which can occupy the bandwidth space that is allocated to different different users. It means the user will not get the uh, bandwidth provided by the internet service provider ISP. It means the divisions in quality of service from that type of the attack. Potential divisions in quality of service by service providers as we discussed represent situation in which a product or services are not delivered to the organizations as expected. Organizations information system depends on the successful operation of many independent support including power grids, telecom networks, part suppliers, service vendors and even another staff and garbage haulers. Internet service as I gave you the example, communications and power irregularities are three sets of the service issues 
that dramatically affect the availability of the information and system. We talked about the internet service or the ISP internet service provider communications. Just if we are not able to communicate with our user, especially the organization which are depended on the internet, that can be the example of our IRCTC railway websites or just suppose make my trip or any other organizations which are providing services through internet and power irregularities. If they are not able to have required power, so the services can be disrupted. So other as we discussed internet service issues and the communication and other service provider issues, other utility service effect organization, telephone, water, waste water, trash pickup etcetera. Many times we see that if we want to complain to a particular organization, so we are not able to do that, that their telephone lines are not working properly. Loss of these services can affect organization ability to function. Power irregularities are very common place, especially in our nation terms, India. We are not having the minimum required power supply we need to develop for our organizations. Organization can be any type. Organization with inadequately conditioned power are suspectable. Controls can be applied to manage power quality. Fluctuation, short or the prolonged access, shortages, losses that we can see that the power is not uh, is very directly related for our computer system or another information technology devices to work. We can see the example that if the battery of our mobile phones get discharged, so we are not able uh, to communicate with our friend, so it means the power is very important. If other services are in place, your software, hardware, but power is not provided, so that can be a very much divisions in quality of service. Another threat can be your espionage or trespass. This threat represents a well known and broad category of electronic and human activities that breach the confidentiality of information. When an unauthorized individual gains access to the information, an organization is trying to protect that act is categorized as a deliberate act of espionage or trespass. It means there can be the only authorized persons in an organization to access or to process the information when an unauthorized individual gain access to that information. So, that will become a threat. When information gathers employ techniques that cross the threshold of what is legal and or ethical, they enter the world of industrial espionage. Instances of soldier surfing occur at the computer terminals that somewhere is just standing behind your soldier and can see your work. That work can be that you are entering the ATM machine's password, you are just typing uh, from the keyboard, you are uh, talking to the public phones or other places where a person is accessing confidential information. The threat of trespass can be lead to unauthorized real or virtual actions that enable information gathers to enter premises or systems they have not been authorized to enter. This is one of the reasons that is why there is the uh, already uh, warning message uh, lesson in our ATM. Uh, cabins or ATM uh, where the ATM machine is uh, located that only one person is allowed within the ATM machine room. Controls are sometimes implemented to mark the boundaries of an organization virtual territory. These boundaries give notice to uh, trespassers that they are encroaching on the organization cyberspace. The classic perpetrator of deliberate acts of espionage or trespass is the hacker. In the gritty world of reality, a hacker uses a scale, uh, guile or fraud to attempt to bypass the control places around information that is the property of someone else. The hacker frequently spends long hours examining the types and structure of the targeted system so that the hacker 
can uh, be able to write the automatic program that directly hack the targeted system. In this slide, we can see the example of the soldier surfing as we discussed uh, that is ATM machine is given and a computer system is given and in both of the case there are the user as well as the another persons who are just standing and in the another one you can also see a door and someone is just looking from that door. Soldier surfing takes many forms some may not be obvious. So, the directly uh, looking at the activities of a particular person is performing or from the door. So, in that case they can catch their keyboard action if we are talking about the ATM machine or can see the password uh, from the ATM machine and by somehow uh, because the ATM cards are the plastic card and can be directly duplicated with some technical thing. So, if they uh, first get the uh, password of a particular person they can easily operate the ATM machine. And simply the second one that a particular person is working on a computer system and the another person is looking what that person is performing. By looking at that one maybe that is your login and the password of the system or maybe just suppose you are operating very confidential information. So, such type of the information can be read from the soldier surfing attack. The hacker profiles as we are talking about the software viruses, software programs that are directly intended to target the system. So, the hackers uh, can be uh, 13 to 18, male with limited parental supervision, spends all his free time at the computer. Another category of the hacker profiles can be modern 12 to 60, male or female unknown background with varying technological skill levels, may be internal or external to the organization. As in our some previous uh, information security concepts, we discussed one of the concept that is psychology of a particular individual person. It means that we should know that the target person who write a program or the virus, what his or her profile. That is why so that we can get the psychological level of a person as well as some thinking level of that person that if a particular hacker write a program, so what can be the motive of that hacker according to the profile of the hacker. Expert hacker who develop software scripts and codes exploits used by the second category the novice or the unskilled hacker. The expert hacker is usually a master of several programming languages, networking protocols, operating systems and also exhibits a mastery of the technical environment of the chosen targeted, will often create attack software and share with others. So, we can see that becoming an hacker is not an easy task. Becoming a programmer somehow is easy than the hacker because hacker needs to be uh, needs to have the technical skills not in the single expertise rather than in multiple ex, uh, expertise. As we discussed programming language not the single language many languages, networking protocols are also and the operating system knowledge are required to become an expert hacker. So, expert hacker are very much intelligent mind so that they are able to create the attack software. Unskilled hacker, many more unskilled hackers than expert hackers use expertly written software to exploit a system. Unskilled hacker is a category of the hacker that they are not able themselves to write the program, but they are able to use the softwares already written to exploit a system. In that case, uh, on the internet or on the online, a large number of the softwares are available 
that can be used as a hacker software, attacker software to exploit a system. So, unskilled hacker only required to learn how these softwares are working, not to be expert in programming languages, networking protocol, just they uh, can learn what the input or what the output of a particular tool and they can work accordingly. Other terms of the system rule breakers can be crackers, uh, freaker, hacks the public telephone network, crackers, cracks or removes software protection design to prevent unauthorized duplication. So, different different name and different different skills are required for the different hackers. Forces of nature. Forces of nature is the another threat uh, that can be for uh, particular organization, force major or acts of God pose the most dangerous threats because they are unexpected and can occur with very little warning. Forces of nature disrupt not only individual lives but also storage, transmission and use of information. We can see there can be the very, uh, very heavy rain on part in particular location and just suppose there is the banking server is located. So, if there is a very heavy rain, so in that case and uh, that server can be affected due to the uh, power supply and can also be there can be the flood. So, these are also terms as the forces of nature. These include fire, flood, earthquake, lightning, landslide or mudslide, tornado or severe windstorm, hurricane or typhoon, tsunami, electrostatic discharge and dust contamination. Since it is not possible <coughs> sorry, to avoid many of these threats, management must implement controls to limit damage and also prepare contingency plans for continued operation. There is a separate uh, uh, term for this one that is also called disaster management system and continuity planning, business continuity planning. So, if there are such type of the forces of the nature occur, so what is the plan in an organization uh, to uh, get through such type of the uh, uh, forces of nature problems. This is very much important although these uh, forces of nature uh, occur very less, but if they are, they can damage the whole of the organization if the particular organization is not having the uh, course for these forces of nature. Human error or the failure. This, this category includes the possibility of acts performed without intent or malicious purpose by an individual who is an employee of an organization. Causes include inexperience, improper training, incorrect assumptions. Employees constitute one of the greatest threats to information security as the individuals closest to the organization data. We need to trust on the employees of the organization because they are the assets of the organization. The organization depends to different different employees so that the organization can work in the market. But we cannot 100 percent trust on the employees even if we are trusting on a particular employee. So, there can be the many reason that an employee can change and can steal the information for their purposes or for indirect purposes to sell the information to other organization. Many times we listen that our credit card information has been still from somewhere from the BPO company. So, these are some human error or the failure. Failure it means we are trusting of the employees, but the employees are not trustable. Another can be just 
the data can be deleted from the inexperience or the improper training of the organization uh, employees or the different persons. We can have the another example, just suppose uh, we give the in, uh, confidential information uh, authority, uh, guarded by the login and the password, but because of inexperience and improper training that particular person tell that login and the password to other uh, employees. So, that will also called human error or the failure. Employees mistakes can easily lead to revelation of the classified data as we discussed, entry of erroneous data, accidental data deletion or modification, data storage in unprotected areas, failure to protect the information. Just suppose you are having an assistant and you order that assistant a chief executive officer or some manager in the organization to store the data uh, in a particular USB and that employee or the assistance given that USB to some other person, maybe the family person or someone else and at last that information uh, will not be confidential one. Many threats can be prevented with controls ranging from simple procedures such as requiring the user to type a critical command twice to more complex procedures such as the verification of the commands by a second party. So, these are just uh, normally controls used to uh, remove the human error or the failure or to stop to some extent by the perfect one to give the training to the humans the who are directly or indirectly related to your organization. Acts of human error, in this slides we can see the pictorial representation of the act. Uh, Tom, two story convicted burglar, wannabe amateur hacker Dick Davis, Harriet employee accidentally deleted the one copy of a critical report. So, as I gave you the example that the accidentally the data can be deleted from the employee either knowing that the data is very important or unknowing the data is important. Information extortion, another threat uh, to the organization. The threat of information extortion is the possibility of an attacker or formerly trusted insider stealing information from a computer system and demanding compensation for its return or for an agreement to not disclose the information commonly done in credit card number theft as we gave the example that the many times we listen that credit card information uh, is not confidential with the uh, organization to which we are providing the data. So, the information extortion is one of the possibility that an attacker uh, or the formerly trusted insider uh, he or she can be the formerly uh, employee of the organization stealing the information missing inadequate or incomplete information or the controls, missing inadequate or incomplete organization policy or planning makes an organization vulnerable to loss, damage or disclosure of information assets when other threats lead to attacks. Information security is at its core a management function. Information security is technical as well as the management function as we also discussed in some of our previous uh, lectures that technically should be strong and the management should also be careful to implement information security policies, procedures and other functions. Missing inadequate or incomplete controls that is security safeguards and information asset protects the control that are missing, misconfigured, antiquated or poorly designed or managed, make an organization more likely to suffer losses when other threats leads to attack. We can have the example simply that we are having a control that is the login and the password to access your email system, which can be very confident, which can be have the very confidential information. But there is the control that you should keep a password very strong, but due to the training or unknowingly that you are not keeping your password secret 
or you are keeping the password that can be easily breakable by any other person. So, such type of the things are also come under missing inadequate or incomplete controls. Sabotage or vandalism. Deliberate acts of sabotage or vandalism is equally popular today is the assault on the electronic face of an organization, its website. Many times we listen that uh, these type of the uh, threat is only in practical situation, but nowadays they are also coming up or entering to electronic uh, resources and one of the most important electronic resource for um, uh, electronic resource for an organization nowadays a website as many of the web uh, organization are conducting their businesses with the help of the website. So, many times we see that the original website is not rendered to the user just any other website is rendered and your information can be uh, given to the attacker website. This category of the threats involves the deliberate sabotage of the computer system or business or act of vandalism to either destroy or an asset or damage the image of an organization. These threats can range from petty vandalism by employees to organized sabotage against an organization. Organization frequently rely on image to support the generation of revenue. So, if an organization website is defaced, a drop in consumer confidence is probable, reducing the organization sales and net worth. We can take the example of uh, simply your online website or the online sales website, just suppose Flipkart. So, we can see that uh, recently just an attack. Uh, uh, was not thus clear in an attack, but the threat to the organization website that they were not able to conduct their business. The reason that that they were not able to their website were not able to handle the user load that occur uh, in, um, uh, to that website. Compared to website defacement, vandalism within a network is more malicious in intent and less public. Today, security experts are noticing a rise in another form of online vandalism in what are described as hacktivist or cyber activist operations. A more extreme version is referred to as cyber terrorism. This is a very hot and uh, great concern area because many of the threats now we are occurring through the website and these websites can be your uh, public websites or can be government officers website and many times we listen that the particular website has been hacked by the attacker. So, we should develop the policies, information security policies, so that the hacker should not be able to hack our website. Cyber terrorism is also the another term, much more sinister form of hacking. So, now with these concluding remarks, friends, today we discussed a number of the threats to the information security including sabotage or the vandalism, viruses, worms and other parts just suppose your employee error all these things and we would like to conclude now this session uh, with information security uh, threats and attacks. Thank you very much. Friends. On that note, I would like to thank sir for this very interesting thank discussion you. and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.